the Family Fellowship Church of Christ, formerly Nairobi Miracle Land Worship Church, began in the year 2002 with a vision of being a church with a difference through manifestation of the image of Christ on earth. The church, which started as a small fellowship of believers meeting in the humble estate of Dandora, has over the years grown extensively to a membership of more than a thousand, cutting across its seven branches. By the grace of God, the church now communes at a magnificent sanctuary in Maringo Posta, a permanent venue the Lord has given the church that is from the year 2014, after a long perseverance through unconducive environments. As we celebrate 20 years of existence, we can only look back and see the faithfulness of our Lord. The church has since been thriving in building strong families, raising godly children, and building strong home Bible fellowships, not forgetting the culture of prayer and consistent Bible study. And just like Samuel who took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and named it Ebenezer, saying, thus far the Lord has helped us. As a church, we can also say the same, that thus far the Lord has been our Ebenezer. My name is Tobias Konyango. I'm currently the Bishop of Family Fellowship Church of Christ. I'm together with me is my wife Jane Konyango and we want just to give a narration of how the church started. When we first started, we started in a house. It was a humble beginning. We were just a handful of people in the house of uh, the late Pastor Tom Ochieng, together with uh, Lynette Ochieng. I can remember our first, our first uh, meeting, we had Jenna Kini, who is uh, commonly known as Mama Quinta. She was the minister that ministered that day. We fellowshiped in that house to, uh, uh, for three Sundays, and uh, there later on, we moved to Dandora, phase so three. Was that the time that you invited me to come and uh, or preach or in the service in the Lord? Yes, when you talk of that, uh, you being invited, that is uh, our first Sunday when we met in Dandora. And uh, I was the facilitator. Then you were invited to preach. You ministered, you ministered during that time and eight souls gave, gave their lives to Christ. And uh, we were invited together again the second Sunday, and you ministered. And after that, we became part of the church. Yes, because uh, at that time, uh, uh, they spoke to us that uh, uh, these were our children, they knew us, and they were wondering how we are going to leave these people without shepherding them. Uh, initially, we were just thinking that we would teach them how they can run, and then we would leave and continue or looking for a ministry that we could join. When we became members of the church, I can remember we were just uh, two families at that time. Pastor Tom's uh, family together with our family. Because Mama Quinta used to visit, she, she stays in Busia, and she was likely to go back to Busia. Then after a short while, Pastor Makaliwa was given transfer from Mombasa, and he joined us. That is when uh, we now started the structure of how the church can be formulated. And uh, uh, I know you can still remember that we used to meet every Friday. Yes, we used to meet every Friday as pastors, together with our families. And uh, as we, we used to pray a lot. Every Fridays we used to pray a lot, putting this church in the hand of God so that God may lead us and give us the way forward. Yes, and that is how the church got started and we registered the church uh, some months later uh, in the name of Nairobi Miracle Land Worship Church, a name that continued until last year, 2021, when the name was changed to Family Fellowship Church of Christ. And uh, uh, there was a lot of consultative process that went through 
and even this name, we consider it as a name that was given by God through the church members as they were giving their suggestions. Mm -hmm. And then later on, by God's grace, oh, a few college students joined us. One of them was uh, Sister McLean. When she joined us, she took over the praise and worship, and there was order in praise and worship team. My name is McLean Olo Ochele. I'm born again. I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I have been a member of this ministry since 2002 when I joined fresh from college, and I have served in it since then till now. I joined the ministry as a praise and worship leader and through the years I've moved and served in different capacities. After she took over, Nathaniel, I can remember Brother Nath, can you remember Brother Nathaniel joining us? Yes. He is the one who took over or oh, printing the church bulletins. Initially, my husband used to write them on his own and print them and bring them to the church every Sunday. My name is Nathaniel Burokot. I am a member of Family Fellowship Church of Christ, an elder. Um, I've been here for a couple of years, since 2002, when we joined together with uh, some young, young tats from the college. We were with George Wanga, we were with McGreen, and uh, Isaiah Ochele, and the rest. We came in at a time when the church was just formed. We fellowship shipped in Pandora. Uh, we were just very few. The pastors and their families were only four. And we could plug in and we realized there was so much to be done upon their shoulders. And that's when we, we had to come in to assist where we, we could. Uh, being a graphic designer, a trained graphic designer, I had to plug in and uh, is the burden of senior pastor on the issue of doing the church tracks and the bulletins and uh, that's when I was appointed to the position of uh, Secretary General, the first Secretary General of uh, Family Fellowship of Church of Christ. By then it was Nairobi Miracle Land. So when, when uh, Brother Nathaniel took over, he was also given a position of the church secretary. He was the first church secretary ever. Yes, and Nathaniel helped so much in terms of developing the structures of the church. Even the logo that the church still has up to today was developed by Nathaniel. And he has continued to do a lot of work even when he requested to be, or to be released from that position. Now having McLean together with Nathaniel, I can remember as being joined by Brother William Oduor. William Oduor took over the Sunday school at that time. Even though we had very few children, my children and Pastor Tom's children, but William Oduor dedicated his time and uh, our children used to like him a lot because he taught them about Salamu Ya mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, that greeting you had to greet uh, holding your hand uh, anytime you are greeting an adult. And these were the disciplines that were inculcated uh, among the children. Then later on, by God's grace, our number kept on adding on. Brother Joshua also joined. And um, later on, God gave him uh, some responsibility in the ministry. He became the, the main leader, the, the leadership of uh, men. Uh, Fellowship. Fellowship. Mm -hmm. My name is Joshua Nemidi. I am uh, the current chair of Men's Ministry, Family Fellowship Church of Christ in Nairobi. I joined this ministry sometimes in 2002 in Dandora and we walked this journey together since then and I've been able to serve in various ministries. Among the min notable ministry I've served in is Sunday School where I joined as a teacher and was also able to serve as a deputy head of ministry and later on as the ministry head. Because of the numbers that were increasing, we started putting the structures of the church into place, like uh, the, the vision of the church was developed at that time, and the vision that God had given to us about the church is to be a praying people, a praising people, a loving and unified people, a development conscious church, 
a church marching forward with an effective outreach to the community, a church with a difference. And particularly on this issue of uh, church with a difference, this was the vision that Makaliwa re uh, received when we were reluctant to start another church. We were thinking we could join any existing church and we were wondering whether there was a need to start another church. And God gave us a vision that if we can be a church with a difference that is doing all these things, then there was a need to start another church. Then from there, moving forward, our numbers started increasing. We were in a tiny place. The place used to be a gym place in Dandora. And uh, it used to be very dusty. And because of that, we started scouting, looking for another venue where we can relocate to. And by God's grace, God enabled us to find, to secure a place in uh, YWCA. Yes. And by the time we reached there, we now realized that uh, we needed to develop a strategic plan for the church that will guide the church as we were moving forward and to put down in writing even the mission, the mandate of the church, why do we exist as a church. And the mission of the church uh, that God gave us is that we exist to exalt Jesus Christ with a mission to know him and to make him known. And this we do through worshiping, evangelizing, caring, reaching out, and praising. And our strategic plan was developed in the year 2006, a strategic plan that listed out clearly what we were expecting to do within a period of three years with all the different departments that were within the church. How will we develop the youth? How will we develop the women? How will we develop the men group? How are we going to progress our development agenda? Now, can you remember our first wedding? Yes. God gave us a first wedding in our church after we had relocated to YWCA. And I can say, Thomas Adol, together with Christine, his wife, were, were our first babies that wedded in our hands. Praise God. My name is Christine Onyango. I am married to this one handsome man, Thomas Onyango, a girl. Uh, we are members of this church, and ours was the first wedding in this church back in 2003. When the church was still back in Tandora, the church was still young. I can remember that the church was full of youths. We only had a bunch of families, mostly uh, mostly of pastors. Uh, so one thing that I remember clearly is that uh, during our meeting where there was a committee meeting and we needed to contribute for our wedding, everybody was involved. Everybody was involved. I remember even when they came for me as the bride, we used the few cars that we had. It's only our pastors that kept the cars and those are the cars that were used in our wedding. They came in handy, all the meetings, all the committee meetings, the pastors were attending. And I remember we used to do those meetings in our, our bishop's house back in Buruburu. Uh, they used to feed us, they feed us, each and every member that came for that committee. So far, I thank God, yes, it has been a long journey. Uh, we are now blessed with four children. And along the line, I've seen so many families that have also wedded in this church, and I thank God for this farm. Our festival is now 18 years. We will be turning 19 years in the near future, and I thank God for God has been gracious and through the support of our pastors, moral support, and everything, any support that we get from them, they have been there for us. Especially when Mama Lona, when I had my first born, she was there, came in hunting. She came in hunting. I remember her providing the first clothes for my first born. And when our first born was born, he was the pride of the church. And when I remember when we came to church, that uh, every every person wanted to hold our baby because he was the only young boy around. Uh, I thank God now he's a grown, he's a full grown young man now. Form for, and this far I can say that through the support of God and the, the pastors and the church members, we have reached here and I'm really very grateful. Since that time, the church has been uh, wedding almost on the average of about 10 weddings per year uh, in the church. And this brought in uh, very many young families 
and from there uh, uh, we now started having all the departments of the church in place. And I think, uh, uh, if you can recall, what really has been a rallying call and a uniting factor in this church has been our motto, which says, a church where love is more than just a word. And because of that, God in, uh, increased our numbers. There came Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Francis, mm -hmm. there was also Pastor Geoffrey Ongondo, mm -hmm. and many more people came and joined us. My name is Godfrey Obiambo Obutu. I personally joined this church in 2004, formerly as Nairobi Land Worship Church, currently as Family Fellowship Church of Christ, where I have grown spiritually and other forms. I've been privileged by the grace of God to serve in leadership position as HBC leader of Congress, then as a worship team director, and currently serving as Family Enrichment Ministry Director. I and my wife Susan got married in this church, and with our four children we've grown together also here in Family Fellowship Church of Christ. Family is a key critical focus area and a key ministry for our church. And we believe on a strong family. We are passionate about family. Building family means building a stronger church, a stronger society, community, and even a stronger nation. And believe that also being a healthy and a better world to live in. From three families in 2002, currently we thank God by the grace of God, we have over 70 families in church. From just three weddings that Bishop presided over in the onset of the church, Bishop has presided over 70 uh, weddings, which reflects the families that we have in church. It's also a reflection of the young demogra the demography of our church structure, which is growing and we thank God for. Some of the uh, early weddings we remember were the adults' wedding, the Pastor Francis' wedding, the Elijah's wedding, are also just a reflection of families that have grown from the very humble moment and currently are built to strong families within the church, which we thank God and celebrate for what God has done. We uh, recruited or rather enlisted uh, uh, Pastor uh, Francis and Pastor Geoffrey as assistant pastors with uh, Pastor Makalewa being a full-time pastor, uh, or, okay, or a full past pastor with, uh, with uh, a docket that he was handling, and uh, Pastor Professor Odiambo also had a docket that they were handling. But uh, uh, along with this, there were several challenges that we were facing, and uh, some of them I think you may remember. Yeah. Mm. When we first started, we didn't have uh, a place where we could keep our instruments. So many a times, our, our only car could carry the instruments from, uh, from church to our house every Sunday, every Sunday. Yes, at that time, uh, we were acting as both uh, also the technicians, even connecting them. I don't even know whether I can remember how to connect them now, but I, I used to do the, those connections, uh, then I'll, uh, I'll preach while uh, my wife was interpreting. But it was a very humble beginning, but a great beginning that God uh, or, or led us through. Other challenges were finances. I can remember before my green joined us, we were having volunteers who could come to help us uh, during a service session and they wanted to be paid. And yet, there were only three people working at that time. Hmm. Yes, and the, these uh, finances were quite a challenge because uh, there were uh, the premises where we were worshipping, they were rented, they had to be paid. There were a lot of facilities which were needed, which needed money. And even the young people that were joining church were still not yet stable. And as uh, I've mentioned, quite a number of them were orphans. In fact, what amazed us were the number of orphans that God brought uh, to the church. A uh, majority of the members that we had at that time were orphans uh, that did not even have uh, or, or, or both, or both parents. Mm -hmm. But before, before the other pastors joined in, the first three pastors, Pastor Tom and Pastor Makalewa, together with my husband, they are the ones who first bought the, the first furniture that we were having for, for the sanctuary. Yes, and uh, they the, the were not really real furniture as uh, of the standard of today. 
but they were plastic chairs. But it was quite a big boost to the church at that time when we had, and quite an, uh, some of those chairs are still available even today. Yeah, the, the chairs that started the church. Yeah, they were blue and white. Uh, the four families which were a representation of the, the core of this church, Pastor Makaliwa, we talk of uh, the bishop, uh, senior Pastor Konyango, we had Pastor Tom, we had uh, Mr. Bubwa, the family, um, uh, the family of Mwanyumba. All these people were really dedicated and they taught us to be very diligent, to be honest and to be hardworking in everything we do. The most unfortunate thing that happened as we were uh, moving along, we lost Pastor Tom oh, in the end. He, he rested and we had to go and lay him to, to rest. Yes, in, in Kano. But his contribution is something that we will forever remember and uh, his family uh, we have kept in touch with and uh, has always been part of us all the time. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Professor Roman Sondia Butino. I'm God again, Christ is Lord and Savior. And he has protected me together with my wife, Dr. Pamela Amoro Chengo Diambu, and our biological children, 11 of them. Thank God that this fire God has chosen us to be part of the church stewardship of the family fellowship of the Church of Christ for the last 20 years. We joined this church back in the year 2003, so I'm celebrating also 19 years of existence. And I remember very well when I just came from Germany and uh, there was a great friend of mine, the church I used to go in Germany. That guy happened to have known our bishop, current bishop, Tobias Kunyago, who is also my friend, together with uh, uh, his wife, Mamalona. I really pay great tribute to this man of God, Tobias, together with his wife, Mamalona, for the resilience and the, 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 the way they have stood with the church. Even at terrible times when the church was almost finding it difficult to continue. Uh, when I joined the church, Pastor, together with his wife and his great friend, Mark Alewa, asked me to join the leadership team as a pastor in charge of development, finance, and many, many other things. Very importantly, I first joined the development of the church committee. And I can remember how we used to meet once every week, not in the church, but as one of our members' office. Madam and Dad, may God bless her wherever she is. I remember the first meeting I was chairing, she gave us files and we had to pray. In that meeting there was Johnson, the others long time I'm praying, I can't remember. And we started planning on how to develop this church. Developing the church in terms of infrastructure, needs and locks, looking for money, learning on how we have to go. And when I joined the church, we were staying in my we were under one of the small rooms, then we, 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 we became very many, and we had to move out and be under tent. And the church grew and grew. And uh, this was a property owned by the Nairobi City Council. They were not very happy with us. Every month they used to give us a problem telling us to move out, move out. And I remember our leader, Bias Kinyango, was so worried. And he told us what we have to do. One of the things that we did was we called for a fast for many weeks. And as we were concluding the fast, yes, and we were dispersed to wherever we are walking around to check if there's any land available. That brought the emergence of the first property we bought in Nairobi next to Uchumi. That land where we are, we have a title deed. It was around five million, but it was not very easy even to raise that money. The owner wanted five million, and the church there were only about not more than ten people who were working, and not the kind of work that we work today, where we have engineers, we have professors like me, we have many many people, but it was very difficult. And so my team learned how to raise money. As we were walking around, Pastor Francis saw that land, he said this land on sale, and he reported to us, and we were told that we wanted five million. And so my team started planning on how to raise the money. 
and as always, Christ, Lord, our God, the faithfulness of our God has always been yes and amen. We raised the money. Don't ask me how we raised it. God brought it, and we bought that land, that grand land. We bought it with the money that was generated from the members of the church, and we had it. And then later on, we started developing the plan and the design on how to build that church. And I remember our architects and many, many others did a plan. And every Sunday, we would stand in front of the pulpit and telling people, showing the people the plan and showing them this is where we want to go. And that encouraged and inspired many members of our church really to raise the money. I remember we raised almost seven, eight, ten million to start building the church. And so we started building the church where we bought the land there in our Jimmy plot. As we were to move the ground floor, we were starting the first floor, the devil attacked us and the city hall came and brought our building down. We did not know how to face the members. A young child and we are really inspired them, they really brought the money. They, we didn't know how to face them. I remember meeting my friend Ratemo Herbert, I think he's in Singapore right now with his beautiful wife uh, uh, there. And we met in town, but Temu could not walk, it was just impossible. But the God of promise, the God who is faithful, somehow found our way. Today, we are here in this church, a beautiful church, again bought when we were actually struggling. I remember in my employer, we had just gone to Arusha, and we were coming back, and I gave a leave to one of the members of our employer in the university. And I told him we are doing something here, can we pass there? And when we passed that place that was brought down, I remember that guy telling me, this is an excellent work, but it's a small place. Can I show you a place where you can go and check if you can take people there? At least there's a parking. That is how we discovered this place. And when the city council attacked us, we started also thinking of how to raise money to buy this place. And again, we talk with our members, we preach to them on their faithfulness, and God brought them. And we bought these things from Cape you and see here, the people who are working there, who are in their circle, bought this thing. And here we are, very comfortable in our place. We have a beautiful church. We have a place for our children. We have a place for everybody. And this far 20 years, you can only say, Jehovah God is faithful. Praise the Lord. My name is Josephine Oyuga and I've been the children ministry head of department since 2014. In Daughters of Virtue, we meet together, we fellowship uh, once a month. We also minister to each other uh, through prayers. We also um, work together as a team and serve in the church when we are called upon as a ministry. Uh, we also have a special day which we call the Ladies Sunday where we do everything on that Sunday. We minister, we serve and some of the special Sundays we also have lunch that we serve at church just to ensure that we are also nourished physically. We also have uh, we also minister to the needs of our members, sometimes financially, if a member is in need, or when a member is in uh, 
a problem we are also called upon and we are able to help in the way in which we can. And so in the ministry we have grown, we have touched each other, we also do visitations uh, to homes, especially when our members have children as a family and we are able to just uh, work together with them, serve together with them and also ensure that they feel as part of the group, as part of the family in the DAOs. As a team, we also have highlights that we have had since the inception of the ministry. And one of them is the seminars that we normally have every year. We call them Ladies' Night Out or the Ladies' Seminars, where we go and meet together and just have a good time. We laugh together, we cry together if need be, and we are able to minister to one another. We are able to learn from each other and also from the various speakers who we invite to be able to teach us and to be able to minister to us. We are also able to, we are also at times able to maybe pay school fees for some of our members' children if they need to go to school. There's a project that we took on and we were able to help uh, in that area and we were able to just work together with them. Uh, we also condone, condone with each other when there is a loss in the church. Ladies have come out so strongly to be able to be part of these families. We go there almost every day. We serve the family members. We provide meals so that those who are having uh, a problem can just be ministered to and they can just feel as part of, of the ministry. And so as a group, we have tried to hold together. We have tried to stand together with each other as concerns the ladies' needs. And I believe as a ministry, we've also been able to touch lives in various ways, as our members can attest. Uh, in the future, we are trusting God to be able to have a women's conference that is something that we have not had ever since our inception, but we trust God that we shall hold a conference where we shall call various speakers to be able to just learn from other ladies from other churches and see what they do and how they do their things so that we also can be able to grow in various areas. We also trust to be able to maybe start a business. We have seen women coming up with businesses in their ministries and doing well. We have uh, schools that are run by women in the ministries and we hope that when we trust God, he will be able to help us come up with a business venture or something to do as a ministry to be able to uplift us and empower us even financially as a ministry. In the year 2014, uh, I got a call to serve in the men's ministry and I was taking over from our brother Wiki Fokach who we had also served with in the, the circle, uh, mini, uh, the circle of the church and uh, from there now I took over the ministry and uh, we've been able to serve. In the men's ministry we've been able to do quite a lot. One among the things we've been able to support is the church development. Uh, uh, Family Fellowship Church has really uh, developed over the years. I remember we started from Dandora, we moved to YWCA, and there was need even to get a tent for the church. Later on, we moved and got acquired a plot. Men were rallied and we were able to come on board. And until even the present uh, location where we are, we've been able to support the course of the church. So among uh, other things that we've been able to do is to have regular fellowships where we support the needs of each members. And uh, we've been vulnerable. Members have been able to share their lives. They've been able to share their experiences. And we've had home fellowships where we've gone to visit uh, men in their various uh, homes. We've supported them wherever they have had uh, good moments and also bad moments and uh, we thank God that uh, this far we are moving on well 
Among the other activities that men's minister has also worked on is supporting needy cases. We've been able to support young and needy people or students who are in need of school fees. We've also been able to mentor young people, uh, call some of them, have them in our homes, just talk to them. We've also been able to open opportunities even for career and other opportunities. And today we are proud of the 20th year anniversary. Even as this church is celebrating this year, we are very, very confident of what the Lord has been able to do. We, it's not our, by our own might, but the Lord has enabled it. And as we look forward to the future of the church, we pray that men are going to rise up and play their part in developing this ministry to the next level. I am aware that uh, we have the plans to have even more branches and I know that men are going to rise up and take up their position in that particular space as we move forward. Um, I believe the words of uh, J.F. Kennedy that children are the living message that we send to the future that we will not see. And uh, because of that, as a church, we have invested a lot in the children ministry. And as the bishop had said before me, that one of the missions that we have is to raise a generation that is going to take over the leadership of this country and even the leadership of this world. So we are very intentional about the programs that we have for children ministry and we have developed a curriculum that trained them into becoming the servant leaders that we want them to be when they are grown. We have also come up with activities that uh, help us grow the children that we have in the church and even the children that are out there that uh, have not been reached by the word of God. So we have activities like uh, devotional, uh, daily vocational Bible school that help us to reach out to the unreached children. And it also helps us to bring together the children of our church uh, in a time when they have closed school and they are home. It is a time that they just gather together and we learn the word of God, we read through the Bible, we have a, a lot of activities around. And through this, we have also seen the talents that our children have. We have seen great talents in our midst. There are children who are talented in drawing. There are others who are uh, talented in uh, the spoken word. Others are talented in singing. And those are some of the skills that we want to, to grow in the children so that they become the best people that they can be when they grow up. And uh, as a church, we are very intentional uh, we have also tried to come up with programs that can uh, reach out to the branches that we already have. We have branches in Migori, in Busia, and in Mombasa, and we are coming up with activities that will help us to bring them together and also to grow them to become the leaders that uh, they should be when they, they grow up. And uh, um, as we are celebrating this 20th year anniversary, it is a time that we are reflecting uh, the, uh, where God has brought us from. I may have not mentioned in the beginning that there are people who have gone ahead of me. Uh, when Sunday school was starting, uh, I mean the children ministry was started, uh, there is uh, William Odwar who was the uh, head of department during that time and he was followed by Joshua Nyangidi who is currently the uh, men, uh, men uh, ministry leader and then I was the third one. And I also want to appreciate that uh, God has privileged me to work together with my husband, Fred Oyuga, uh, to have this ministry. And uh, we are trusting that God is, is taking the children to uh, places that uh, we may not reach as, as their parents. So we look forward to a time when God is going to open greater doors for us we believe that you're going to reach more children. Uh, we trust that uh, we are going to work together as a church, you know, to bring up the children that God has entrusted us with, as we also target the children that probably have no parents or they have no fathers. And that is why I would also want to appeal 
to uh, the, the fathers and even the men in the church and all over that please if you can give yourselves to working in the children ministry it is very important because some of the children they don't have fathers in their homes and when they come to the children ministry of the Sunday school that is when they interact with a male figure and, and that will be able to change their lives. We thank God for uh, the privilege to, to serve in the children ministry and I believe that this is the best that we can do for the future generation. This far, the Lord has been great. The Lord has been wonderful to us that through the church we have seen His grace, we have seen His sufficient mercies, we have seen His sufficient love in the youth ministry. That uh, all the way we as youth, we have transited from uh, school to the, to the point where we are getting to the point of getting married that we have seen God through the support of the church in making we as youth remain equipped, remain ready, remain steadfast, remain alert in the kingdom of God. That the Lord has given us uh, courage, He has given us the wisdom, He has given us the encouragement, He has built us strong in the word that our anchorage in Christ has grown deep every other day. And all this has been seen through the church, through the leadership in the church, through the different activities that we as youth have handled it with the support of the church. Among the activities that uh, we have engaged in ensuring that uh, we get to work in achieving the vision of the church uh, and uh, all the objectives set that come with the vision, we have the youth dinner that uh, we as youth have been so active in participating in them. We have the youth fellowships, we have the youth retreats, we have boarding sessions between different accountability teams within the youth team, we have the youth conferences, and we have the youth Sundays. That in all these activities, we as youth have ensured to participate in planning and implementing each and every, each and, each and every detail of the activity and seeing that at the end of the day, what comes out gives a true picture of a Christian and what the Lord expects of us, even as we keep on with this journey of salvation. The church has been very vital in running all this, in ensuring that as we facilitate all this, that we remain strong and we remain stable in doing each and everything. That to this day, we as youth, we, have, we cannot run short of testimonies of what the Lord has been doing through the church and we can see even those who have gone ahead, those who are already building the families, that uh, it's a sure testimony that the Lord has been working through the youth ministry in seeing them that uh, they be strong and they be stable in all that they're doing. What we are looking forward as a ministry is that uh, in the coming days, we shall keep experiencing of the grace of God, we shall keep experiencing of the masses, and we shall keep experiencing of the power of God in all that we do that as we look forward to many who are youth now to build their families, that the Lord shall keep them strong, the Lord shall keep them alive. That for those who are still in school, who are still in the colleges, that even as they look forward to come to the clearing of their higher education, our hope as youth is that they will remain strong and they will remain steadfast in the word, that the Lord will open doors for their success, even as they clear the exams, as they clear their studies. And even for those who are walking out the here, who are in the industry, the job industry, and the corporate society. We as it, our hope is only that the Lord shall empower them and shall keep them strong, even the corporate society. That as they are there, that the Lord will open more doors for them, that they will be a representative of the kingdom of God outside of the corporate world. And even as they come back to the church, they shall be very vital in ensuring that the church remains strong, the church remains alive, and that the vision of the church is achieved. So that is our prayer, that is our desire, and that is our hope that we shall achieve all this as youth.
name is George Owara Wena, one of the pastors in this church. I've been in this church since its inception in 2003, but I was in Mombasa branch, handling Mombasa branch, where I worked until 2008 when I was brought here. Um, Samuel Oyola, um, born again, Christian, I'm married with three children. I am currently the chair of the FFC board. My name is Gilbert Dachi, I'm a born again Christian. It has been an incredible journey in this church. I joined Family Fellowship Church of Christ in 2005, that is 17 years ago, as a young youth from the university and uh, this has been home and a lot has happened in terms of all the changes that I've seen happen in my life have happened in this church. This is the same church where I got married. About 13 years ago I met the love of my life in this church and we have served a lot together in this particular church. My role in the church, I'm a Secretary General of the church. For the last 10 years I've been the Secretary General of the church, coordinating admi administrative functions of the church in different ways. When I came here, I was assigned various ministries, beginning with cell groups, and here we have uh, about 10 cell groups. Cell groups assist us to reach out to our members in various uh, towns and locations. So we have 10 cell groups that we are handling. That is where people meet because we come from uh, various locations. In welfare, we normally handle uh, the bereavements, the dedications, and even feeding the members who are vulnerable, and even taking care of the school fees for those who are unable. In taking care of uh, people who are uh, unable to take care of themselves, charge do some contributions on a monthly basis, which we call Samaritan's giving. We do these ones and we collect them and distribute them according to the needs of the members. Also, we have a last expense insurance scheme which handles the bereavements in our midst. We have members here who come from various backgrounds, but we pull our resources together so that when one gets something to, that has happened to them, then they can be assisted. In this last respect insurance scheme, we pay um, an annual premium of a certain amount they say like 3,000, the, 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 the insurance scheme that we are having right now, we are paying 3,000 per annum. And then when you pay this 3,000 per annum, when something happens to your family and extended family, you are compensated 100,000 Kenya shillings. So this one covers a spouse, it covers a, a principal, spouse, four children, parents, and parents in law, a total of 10 people covered under this scheme. I also do branches coordination, and uh, we have an expansion, a very big plan for expansion. Our head, the bishop, have assigned us this year. Right now, we've already opened eight branches. Our first branch, which I was handling, is Mombasa. Because initially, we only had Nairobi and Mombasa. So we have Mombasa. We have Mariwa branch in, in Homa Bay, we have Nyarambo branch in Migori, we have Busia branch in Busia County, we have Seya branch in Seya County, we have Uimaga branch in Homa Bay County, and lastly we have Rongo branch in Migori County. The church still has a plan to open two more branches in Nairobi, because Nairobi only have these hill headquarters and uh, the various same groups. So the church is planning to open a branch in Mombasa Road, where we've already allocated a place where we are going to set that church. The plan is underway, there is a committee working on that. We also have a plan to open another one in Kangundo Road. We are also working in that. And all these are in plan, and we are working towards that. They are within the plan period. This plan period that we are in, we must open these ones. Yet again, we also have a plan to open a branch in Kisumu. Kisumu also, we are still looking for a land, and we are working on even how to start even in a hall to start fellowshiping there and worshiping God as we continue looking for a land. So that is the much we have gone with our branches. And in these branches, there are branches like Mombasa. We have our personal property there, church border property. We have a church which we have built there, doing very, very well. 
then in Nyarombo also we have a plot. We have built a church there. We thank God it's doing very, very well. And also in Mariwa, we bought a land, built a church, and the church is also doing very well. So in Siaya, we bought a land, but we've not built a church. We bought a land there, one acre. We are still planning to see how the church can be erected. We are still fellowshipping in a hall closer to where we bought that land. I will explain a little bit the structure of the leadership that we have here at FFCC. At the topmost uh, level of leadership, we have the board of directors. Uh, the board of directors, uh, where we have the board chair, the secretary, and also uh, leaders who are ahead of various uh, subcommittees within the board. And then just below uh, the board of directors, we have the bishop of FFCC. And then below bishop, we have the pastoral council. So this includes all our pastors within the FFCC. And then below the uh, pastoral council, we have heads of ministries. And the church has about uh, seven ministries that are grouped into seven uh, categories. And then below those seven major departments, we have several um, individual ministries that are quite numerous within this church. So briefly, that is how the church structure is. The church has uh, four major objectives. The first objective of the church is to enhance spiritual growth. Uh, in this church, we believe that uh, each and every member should not be stagnant in their work with Christ. And so there is an elaborate plan to ensure that each and every member grows spiritually. Um, the second objective is to create effective church ministries. And as you know, this uh, church is growing very fast. And if we want to expand and reach out for Christ, there is a need for the church to create effective ministries that will perform these roles. And so that is the second objective of the church. The third objective of the church is equipping the church with the resources. And this one we are very serious about because we desire that everything we do in the church, we have the resources that are able to do that. And so that is the third objective. The, the fourth objective is developing strategies that will fulfill church vision and mission. And so all the church uh, uh, heads of departments, uh, together with the leadership that I've just mentioned there, work together to ensure that um, all the strategies are in place to fulfill the vision and the mission of the church. And to put this together, the church has established uh, six pillars of action. The first pillar is on our spiritual growth. As I mentioned uh, earlier, the spiritual growth is key for the church. The second pillar is on membership and welfare. Uh, in our congregation, not everybody is in the same level. And we find that uh, many people uh, do need welfare. And as, a, as a, a, a family of believers, we work together to ensure that all our members are taken care of, both spiritually and in the event that they are lacking something, the church comes together to support them. When they are grieved, ETC, the church work together to support them. It's very so we have that uh, pillar of membership and welfare being a very strong pillar of the church. The second thing is leadership and governance. As this church is growing, we have a very dynamic church. Uh, we need very strong leadership 
and very strong governance in place. And so that is what will take us to the levels that we aspire. So we are instituting very transparent leadership, very accountable uh, governance that we are working with to help us grow this church to the levels that we want. The, uh, the third pillar is in linkages and partnerships. Yeah, you realize that in this world there's nothing that you can do in solo. And so together with believers out there, we are trying to create an avenue of linkages and partnership with other organizations, with other spiritual churches, so that we all work together in expanding the kingdom of God here on earth. And that is very important. And then the, fourth, the, the fifth one is the financial sustainability. Uh, there is nothing you can do much without a financial resource. And so the team is working very hard to ensure that we have the finances that will be able to help this church grow to the higher levels. So there's that aspect of financial sustainability that the leadership is really working hard on. And our members are very supportive, as, as you can see what has been done. This church started from nowhere, and now where it is, we can ascribe this to the church membership that has been so committed in giving and supporting the work of God. And then we are in the, third, in the, fifth, in the sixth uh, pillar, we want to work on church expansion. At the moment, the church is organizing several outreach, and we are going out there to minister the word of God out. And so through the ministry of outreach, we are expanding in our uh, branches. And I, as, as you can see, this, this year alone, I think we are now talking about six branches that are being created out there. So this is an area that we are really looking into and we hope that in the next few years uh, we will have our branches almost everywhere. Family Fellowship Church of Christ is one that is um, based on a strategic plan and our governance follows so much just like other corporate institutions. We borrow heavily from best corporate practices and uh, part of what we do in the church in terms of administration we are guided by our strategic plan and out of the strategic plan we draw our annual work plan which guides how we work in the church. So the church is blessed to have eight very dedicated and God-loving workforce. We have Brother John leading the church as the admin together with other workers doing an incredible job in the church and the church has stood and uh, we have managed to run the church very effectively with that thin workforce but very effective workforce over the years. Um, the other thing that also happens in the church that um, we are basically guided by the annual work plan and in the annual work plan, uh, the annual work plan is constructed in such a way that different heads of ministries uh, bring together all their plans for the year and we consolidate that to form an annual work plan which guides our work in the year. And um, uh, our annual work plan has got very clear targets and also timelines within which certain outputs or deliverables are supposed to be met. And uh, what we also do, which is really great in this church, which sets us apart, is the fact that on a quarterly basis, we give progress update to the church. Not just on the uh, financial uh, updates, but also on the performance of different ministries. And we also do financial updates on a, on a quarterly basis where members are updated on the collections we have had over time. Of course, on a monthly basis, we consolidate all our church collections. But what is so important that on a quarterly basis, we update the church on how the finances have been utilized in the church. And uh, again, it also gives us an opportunity to measure the performance of different ministries based on the work plan that we had. So this sets us apart as a family fellowship church of Christ. These are some of the good practices that we have seen over time in the church. Something that we want to continue with even moving into the future. Uh, what is also great again in terms of membership, the church is made up of around 1,200 members and out of that 40% are children. So the future is great with this 40% transitioning to youth and finally to adults. 
So the future is very bright with this uh, number. Again, around 20% of the members of the church are youths. So that again also informs some of the, um, the population segments that we need to target as a church in terms of our programs. So we have, we have a, 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 we have, we have a pool of diversified programs that meet the needs of different people. Again, we also have around 60% of the church membership is made up of adults. We get both women and men. And our church, again, is one that is family-based. So most of the times, our, uh, our, our plans and our activities are geared towards meeting the needs of different couples in the church. So that is how the church is made. But then again, what also happens, apart from the annual, apart from the quarterly updates that we give, we also consolidate all this. At the end of the year, we provide a yearly update on how the church has performed both in terms of the activities that we had planned to do, but also in terms of our financial performance. And this is really important. The church is, is guided um, by best practices such as audited books of accounts. On annual basis, we have our audited books of account by qualified auditors. And this again uh, is an important component that the church does. What is also useful that um, just as required by the law of the land, we do annual returns as a church. And again, part of the annual return uh, in, in involves submission of, of our audited books of accounts and even our annual reports, how detailing how the church has progressed over time. The church holds AGM every year and this is a perfect opportunity where we update the members on how the church has performed in terms of the activities that we are set to do. But the other thing that is also very useful is that during the AGM that's where we also present our audited books of account. So the church every year appoints qualified auditors that audit our books of account. And uh, again, it's also important to highlight um, that the church is guided by some of the best financial practices in the land, even in terms of our financial management as a church. One, uh, the church has credible treasurers who handles the cash on a weekly basis. So we have a pool of about four, and at any given time, as part of the church policy, two people hand handle the finances when we meet. Again, we handle both cash and also the, the digital financial transfer through the MPS and other means. So that is how that is done. But again, what is also very useful, even in terms of the different ministries that we run, we don't operate in a hard hoc way, but we are very structured, such that all the different heads of ministries, when they draw their annual work plan, they also cost them. So our annual work plans are costed, and the costing informs how the financial allocation is done, and also how uh, we are going to apportion part of our income to support the different programs that we have in the church. And if it's not planned, then it's not prioritized. So we make sure that uh, our prioritization is based on the needs of the different groups of the people. Uh, so that uh, the needs of the members are met, but also the different programs that the church runs are accomplished as planned. So that is one aspect which is, which is very important. Again, um, as the, as the church has been evolving over time, we try as much as possible to align with the best practices that are there in our midis. Again, we also have a team of, of workers who are very trained. We try as much as possible that different workers of the church are also exposed to different trainings that exist in the corporate sector so that they measure up and, and they also align to the best corporate practices that are there. Um, the other bit that I would also want to highlight is the corporate social responsibility. As a church, apart from the spiritual nourishment that we provide to the church members, and also the welfare support that we also offer to church members, there is the CSR component, which is also very huge. When we came here as a church a few years back, we realized that apart from reaching out to the community with the message of the Kingdom of God, we also needed to meet their needs, and one of the immediate needs we realized that the, the community, the host community, had a number of children that required support. So we set up um, a kindergarten unit within the church, which takes care of children in baby class, uh, pre, pre primary, PP1, and also PP2 children. And when we graduate them, we churn them out to other neighboring schools that are also accredited. Those ones that we know can continue to take care of them. And, and this is offered at a very subsidized cost, and uh, more than three quarters of the children come from the host community. And they have significantly appreciated such kind of gesture and the support that the church offers to the community in terms of raising their children. The other 
a corporate part of the CSR that the community does is also the welfare aspect. We know we have several welfare needs in the community, apart from um, monetary support, food support, and also other aspects. The church ensures that the needs that are identified in the community are dealt with. There are times like when we had COVID-19 in the last couple of years, quite a number of people lost their source of livelihood, and we needed to offer support as a church. So the church came in and provided food support, clothing support, and other support that the community required. So that is one aspect that the church pro prospered on in terms of the corporate social responsibility. Uh, the last bit is in the community where we live, we have also had rehabilitation programs where we target the youths who have been affected by, by drugs, through drug abuse, and even adults who are also drunkards and people who have other social challenges in the community. So we organize trainings and opportunities where we train them as a church and we also offer mentorship programs to the youth that are there in the community. Again, we also have orphans in the community who are very bright in school. If they do well, we have a way of supporting them through our women and also men ministry in the church as part of the welfare and the corporate social responsibility that we run as a church. One of the things that uh, I'm still very grateful to the pastors is uh, the way they grasped the development agenda that God had given to the church. And our development agenda is based on uh, First John and verse number, uh, of, uh, Third John, the book of Third John and verse number two, which says, Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So we have considered uh, our pastoral obligation to traverse uh, the spiritual, social and economic lives of our members. And we have a strong belief that uh, when the members prosper, then the church also prospers. And because of this reason, we have really uh, encouraged members to to or, or seek further education and also start up businesses and also or in terms of their career to or really repackage themselves as professionals in whichever field that they are. And one of the basic foundations that the pastoral team uh, fixed in this fellowship is the basis of love. This Family Fellowship Church of Christ is a place where love is more than just a word. And this was the bonding factor. This is what attracted so many to the, this ministry. And you find their lives getting transformed. I remember uh, when we joined the, the, the church, many of us never had jobs. And the pastoral team would put money together to rent houses for young people who just came from college and it spoke volumes to, to us. This one was, could not have been done by any other ministry or any church, but Family Fellowship Church of Christ bothered to take care of these young graduates, rent houses for them and get their feet on the ground and by this alone Many people joined. The many graduate, young graduates came because they found a place they could find home, call home. They found a place they could uh, plug in and join and be at home and even work freely uh, for God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And because of that, we have so many graduates in our midst. Mm -hmm. People with different uh, professions in our midst. Mm -hmm. We even have some of uh, our members that are owning their own companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it has been a, a great progress. Today, as we speak, 90% of the church members are college graduates or that uh, are, uh, or have studied in different uh, fields. We have more than uh, 10 PhDs within the church here and almost double the number in various stages of uh, completion within the church here. But what I'm even more proud, proud about is uh, that uh, currently we have almost 30 of people with master's degrees and the majority of them are ladies. And that's a big achievement even for the society. We have professionals here. We have uh, people who are in the academia. We have business people in this community. And we are keen in causing a great effect, the salt effect, 
in the world, not only in this country, not only in this continent, but in the entire world. And that is our core business, changing lives. We, we have also partnered uh, during this journey with a number of uh, organizations and people, like uh, uh, the one that stands out is uh, FOCUS. FOCUS is the uh, Fellowship of Christian Unions, where we are partnered in the ministry. And currently, as we are talking, uh, the church administrator here, uh, they helped us to, to seek and to uh, recruit the church administrator, both here in the church in, in Mombasa, in Nairobi and in Mombasa. And we have also worked closely with the various Christian unions or across the universities and colleges in the country, and also with the net ministries. For the individuals, so the ones that come to mind are like uh, Pastor Ephraim Boyer, who has been behind the scenes, so uh, monitoring everything happening in the church, always consulting with me, always giving advice. And I can also remember uh, Bishop Padoyo and Mama Ada Adoyo, the ones who also presided over our 25th uh, Silver uh, Jubilee anniversary that we celebrated many years ago. <laughs> 70 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, I can also say that God has worked with us. God has enabled us to have branches. Mm -hmm. Uh, in some parts of the country, and we are still moving forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and uh, th these are the things that uh, we are projecting in terms of the long-term plans for the church. We are looking forward to a very, uh, having a very spiritual church, because uh, at the end of the day, what matters is whether we will go to heaven. And this is what we are trying to inculcate among the membership. And we are also looking forward to growing or leadership for this nation, that when people will be counted, we believe that some of them will have come from this church. This organization that was just little then uh, also mentored a number of others, like Wilson Yesua, who passed through my hand. I, I was a mentor uh, uh, to him, and he has grown to be a professional right now. So we have seen massive transformation of lives. Hello everyone, my name is Wilson Yeswa. I love the Lord. I joined this church way back in 2003. It's a very long time, it's almost 20 years. When I was living along Jogo Road, I had noise, uh, maybe the noise of uh, the sound of the instrument, and I got really interested. Who are these new visitors in our area? And then when I was walking, I saw a new new tent with the new people and I said, why not try and come and visit them? I purposely uh, decided that the, the next Sunday is going to be my visit to the, to the new found church. Actually, when I went in now, I remember the convincing word was that uh, this is a church where love is more than just a word. And I said, why not? I, I can try this love that is more than just a word. And I remember also one of the, the convincing after the service was that if make that seat your seat if you don't have any other seat. Actually, that was the beginning of the convincing time. Remember, you're just new and joining the church, and you don't really, you barely know anyone. And uh, along the way, you build a relationship. And uh, you find brothers and sisters who now lead you to the precious way where by knowing God. Remember from the village where you don't, where most of you, all of us know the life in the village. Most of us who are brought up there, visiting the church sometimes becomes a bit of a hurdle. But this one, I found love and I found a hope. And that is now was the beginning of my journey in knowing Christ. Then I had dropped out of school. And joining the church, we were one of now the first Sunday school children. And progressively we grew to a, a bigger number. And we are now adults from those. We've gone through different stages. You have seen progress, you've seen several achievements. And I have found loving brothers and sisters who have helped me to grow to who I am today. Some have picked, have held my hand, 
they have helped me to be now a respectable young man. I remember one of the brother who requested me to visit him when he was now the head teacher of the school. I visited him and I'll forever be grateful to you, Brother Kichemba. You said I should visit you so that you can see how you can help me. At that time I was just a private uh, candidate or student. I used to read at daytime, work at. And at daytime sometimes or sometimes I change the shift. I work a day then read at night. Uh, I visited Brother Kichemba and uh, he decided to, re to register me in the school that he was now the head teacher. I remember it was now actually from four, that is second term. Now the solid time I've been to school, there are only two terms. But the rest, yeah, the gaps have been away out of school. Actually managed to go through the high school. And through that, um, I, trans I transited to now to the university. And I'm here today saying that uh, for sure, if it were not God, then I would not have been here. What am I telling you as a young person of the church? Learn to wait on God. Learn to wait on God. If you wait on God, God will never let you down. And one of the strongest messages I think I remember from uh, my Sunday school pastor, Geoffrey at that time, he used to say Jeremiah 29 That I think that was one of the most uh, repeated, uh, uh, let me say, messages at that time, that God knows the plans he has for you. And today, I can look back and say for sure God had great plans. But those plans were to go through several stages. So that through me, probably when you're out there and you're joining the church and you don't know how to find your place, you can look at me, you can hear my story and say, for sure this is, a, this is God, there is God who works miracle. And I'm a living testimony even to the young men who have seen me, who have seen uh, me grow into now who I am today. Wanesu Asmiwe, kwa majina naitua Miruka Joram. Joram ndiyo mume wangu, anaitua Joram Singo, ndi ambaye alikuwa mshirika wa hili kanisa la nila FFC Church. Na mimi ni mtanzania, mtake Dar es Salaam. Nilijiunga na kanisa la FFC, mwaka F-2009 nilikuja mpacho nilikuwa ni mwelewa kupitia mume wangu ndo nilikuja kujua kanisa hili na tangu nimejiunga na mshukuru mungu sijawahi jutia nina shukuru kikipini nimejiunga F-2009 nilikuja hapa nilipokelewa na wamama nilipokelewa na watumishi wa mungu kwa umoe ya upendo nikajisikia niko nyumbani sikuona ukweke na sikusikia kwamba niko mbali na nyumbani kwa hilo tu kwa kweli napenda kushukuru sana uongozi wa, wa FFC Church Pastor Konyango pamoja na uongozi wake wote na pia bila kusahau na kuwa siku ya harusi yangu 2009 pasta alituma watu kuja Tanzania kwenye harusi kwenye harusi yetu nashukuru sana Abbot nashukuru sana Andali na washukuru sana kwa kwa kwa, kwa kuwa walikuja kushiriki nasi kwenye kwenye harusi yetu. Kwa kweli na washukuru sana 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 sana. Na katika yote kwenye upande wa kiloho nimekuwa nimekuwa kwa sehemu kubwa kutokana na mafundisho ya uongozi na ufundisho wa uongozi wa mama na na mafundisho pia ya kanisani. Na mshukuru Mungu sana na mbarikiwe siku hadi siku. Ni upendo wenu ndio umenifanya paka leo hii nimedumu kanisani na sisi wazi wazi fikirii kama kanisa.
on this momentous moment of Family Fellowship Church of Christ's 20th anniversary is a time of reflection of celebrating 20 years of God's faithfulness and recounting the great things God has done in our midst as a church and as individuals in the last two decades. The church has gone through transformational and transitions of low and high moments of both in families, spiritual and even economic fronts. It's a time of thanksgiving and reflection of just looking through what God has done in our members, couples, families, our children, achievements that God has enabled us to, to have in individual and the church. And as apart from that, the celebration is a hallmark and a big landmark for us as a church because it will also be a time of uh, to, to mark the, the consecration of the FCC bishop but also the ordination of our pastors, which is just a, 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 a reflection of a spiritually growing church in, in the fronts that we have. The theme of the 20th anniversary is, is, is derived from 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, where Samuel says, Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and named it Ebenezer, saying, This far the Lord has helped us. It is in this regard that we, we, we are cognizant that it has been the Lord who has helped us as individuals and as a church and as families to come this far 20 years down the road. Recounting the great things God has done from the humble days in the hall of Gandora, then to WCA, small room, then to the grounds of the tents in, in WC, y, 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 YWCA, and then to the Jogorod Church, and then to the Island Cinema Hall. And finally, this magnificent sanctuary that God has given us, we have nothing else but to celebrate and thank God for his great faithfulness. The 20 years that the church has existed has, have been very transformative over time. We have seen the church grow from one level to the other. The church that was started just by um, uh, three members has grown to over 1,200. We hope that as we, as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the church, we can only hope and trust that the Lord is going to be on our side and the future is going to be great. We shall continue to transform the community and continue with the programs that we run as a church and we will make sure we are accountable to the members of the church and make sure that we embed the best corporate practices as we continue to run the church as an administrative wing of the church. Leo tunasherekea anniversary ya miaka 20. Kwa kweli tunashukuru Mungu sana na katika yote tunashukuru uongozi ambao umesimama na kanisa tangu mwanzo mpaka kufikia siku ya leo imegarimu mkono wake. Barikiwe sana na Mungu awabariki. I can only say that from the faithfulness of God that I've seen the last 19 years I've been this time, the greater is great. But we have to remain faithful, we have to remain resilient, we have to look at the word of God that all is possible for them that trust in Christ Jesus. May God bless you and once again congratulations as you enjoy your 20 years of life. I just want to thank everybody for joining us uh, in this celebration as we celebrate our 20th anniversary. Uh, it is our prayer that the Lord will continue to guide us, to protect us together with the leadership and the membership, that we will continue to celebrate uh, many more anniversaries to come. May God bless you and may God continue to sustain us. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I just to appreciate you and welcome you on board as we join hands in the ministry work to Trust God as we look forward in the new frontiers in the years to come as we build the church for the Lord. Karibuni sana as we celebrate the 20th anniversary and reflecting on God's faithfulness. Thank you and a certain.